Karen BG here for the Cargill Middle School Sunday School lesson for Sunday, February 7th, 2021. Welcome. So our focus is coming through captivity and following Jesus's example in praying and serving others. Our focus scripture today is Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. And I'd like to start with our welcome and our welcoming prayer. Holy One, who makes all things possible, lift us when we are weary, be our strength and fill us with hope as we seek to serve you and our neighbor this day. Amen. So just a reminder that we are in this season after the epiphany, which is a time when we hear stories about Jesus and the disciples. And the color green marks this season of growing and learning about Jesus. So here is our opening prayer. I've got a few things here to help us um, when, when we talk about having God pouring out over all creation. I have some water for that, so I'll try to pour that. And then also rem remembering that the light of God's love that Jesus brought to our world, I will light the candle. Okay? So come, let us remember God's love poured out over all creation and us. Let us remember the light of God's love that Jesus brought to our world. God's love shines out for you and me. Amen. Let's talk about things that you like to do when you take time to relax and get your energy back. As in today's story about Jesus, he takes some time out just as we do. I know that I actually took a nap today. Uh, and I just need a time to relax and to get my energy back after a very busy week. Uh, so sometimes it's taking a little rest. Sometimes it's just sitting back and unplugging and getting rid of um, being on a device and reading a book. Or maybe spending time with a pet that you might have or listening to music. So it's really important to take time to relax and get your energy back. And so in today's story, we're going to hear about Jesus and he takes some time out too, just as we do. This week, we will read another story about Jesus from the Gospel of Mark. Over the last uh, few weeks, you have heard the following stories. Jesus calls the fishers. I remember that one and Jesus teaching and healing in the synagogue. Today's story takes place just after last week's story of Jesus teaching and healing in the synagogue. When Jesus decided more help was needed to do God's work, Jesus invited four fishers to come along, Simon and Andrew, who were brothers, and James and John, who were also brothers. They had probably heard Jesus teaching, so when he said, come with me and you will draw people closer to God, they went with Jesus. I'll just move this over to the other side so I can see the words. They went to the city of Cap Capernaum. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue where the people gathered to learn about and to praise God. There Jesus taught about God's love, and the people were amazed at the power and authority of Jesus. The news of this wonderful teacher traveled from person to person, 
from family to family, from village to village. So traveled by word of mouth. Jesus, Simon, Andrew, James, and John left the synagogue and went to Andrew and Simon's house, which was nearby. As soon as they got there, they were told that Simon's mother-in-law, the mother of Simon's wife, was sick in bed with a fever. Jesus went to see her. Jesus took her hand and helped her get out of bed. When she stood up, the fever was gone and she was fine. She was so fine that she set about her usual work of making her guests welcome. That evening, as the sun was going down, people came from all around uh, Capernaum sorry, to Andrew and Simon's house. They brought sick people for Jesus to heal. It looked like the whole city was crowded around the door. Jesus cured many people that evening. Well, I guess I could float up or to the top too if I want. <laughs> now the next morning, even before the sun came up, Jesus went off to a quiet place to be alone to pray to God. Everyone else was sound asleep, but when they got up, they didn't know where Jesus was. They looked all around for Jesus. Simon and Andrew looked for Jesus. James and John looked for Jesus. Simon's wife and mother-in-law looked for Jesus too. When they found Jesus, they said, everyone is looking for you. Now you have found me, said Jesus. Let's go to the towns around here so I can tell more people the message of God's love and so I can heal people there too. Jesus and the four fishers went all over Galilee. Jesus taught in the synagogues where many people came to listen, and Jesus healed many people too. Oh, wow, it would have been really, really amazing to see that. What did Simon's mother-in-law do after she was healed? I mean, if you were so sick, you couldn't even get up out of bed. And then here is Jesus. And all he did was help you get up out of bed and, and you stood up and miraculously you're healed. She felt so much better. She got up and did her normal everyday stuff. Like anything you would do when you have guests, probably preparing a meal, maybe, you know, waiting on people, doing other chores, being a hostess. That's pretty amazing because uh, when you feel that ill, that's not normally what you are able to do. What might it have been like to be in the crowd at Simon's house that day? Well, I'm sure it was overwhelming. I mean, if especially, especially now with people getting COVID and everything, can you imagine if Jesus were at your home? And then the word would get out quickly and people who were ill would be wanting to be healed, of course. And it sounds like he was healing close to hundreds or more people. So um, he was probably exhausted. Why do you think Jesus needed time to relax and be away from the others? Because he needed time to be with God. He needed time to pray. He needed time to have to himself and with God um, to, to prepare. So he was preparing to go to Galilee and to travel around and to heal people. So he needed that time away. Jesus helped people to feel better and we can also help and care for others as we share God's love. Jesus also showed the importance of looking after ourselves with quiet times of prayer. 
that is so important. So just having time to reflect, having a quiet moment to spend with God and in prayer. That really, really helps you stay centered and helps you in your faith. What are some ways we can take some quiet time for ourselves? So we kind of talked about that a little bit. I'm sure you have um, some ideas that um, are, you know, that work for you. Um, I really do like the idea of just having five, 10 minutes every day or, or more if you can get it, depending on your schedule, um, to make time for God to have some quiet time to pray. What are some ways we can use our hands to help others? Well, you know, obviously helping someone if they fall down, helping hands um, can be used to help with the chores around the house, picking up your room, doing the laundry, washing dishes. I mean, all of those things can be done by you without having an adult ask you. That is a huge way to show someone that you care and that you want to help them. And when things get back to normal, I know a lot of you also love to help on mission trips and help doing things around the church and help, you know, in the community. So there are many ways you can use your hands to help. So there are some activities, if you choose to do them, that are suggested. This one is serving and praying. Um, so it's about Mark writing that Simon's mother-in-law began to serve the people. So that's the language of the New Testament is Greek. And the Greek word used for serve is de, de <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to say it. De econi, de econia. It is used many times in the New Testament as people try to follow the example of Jesus. So we can serve others through our church, and we have many, many times. So we are all looking forward to the time when we can be together and we can serve others praying. After a night of serving the many people who were sick, Jesus needed some time alone. He had more serving to do the next day. To prepare, Jesus prayed to God. It wasn't a short prayer. Jesus began praying before the sun came up and didn't stop praying until Simon and the others found him. So just think, what do you think Jesus prayed? What prayer might you say to help you be ready to serve others? Sometimes saying the Lord's Prayer will give you strength. Maybe you have another prayer. I think, you know, having the Lord give you the words for a prayer that's meaningful for your situation is helpful too. And it doesn't have to be a wonderful, awesome prayer. It's like just talking to God. You can just communicate with God through your words, through your thoughts, through your heart. And um, just making time to do that is very important. Well, this is kind of fun. You could definitely do this. You could make a diorama. You could make a scenery. Um, so it says to use your imagination. Um, of course, I can't give you supplies right now. You can use supplies you have around the house to kind of make a scene of um, what maybe it was like with Jesus traveling at the time and helping others. Um, it says you can draw um, a face on a round clothespin and dress up the figure. I mean, you guys are so creative. You can come up with something using items around your house. And I tell you, it's kind of fun to make a diorama. <laughs> and you could even make a uh, um, like an animated movie or something. So um, it would be kind of fun. I'd love to see it if you do it. And I really like this. 
Here are some of the things Jesus taught the disciples. Jesus said, feed the hungry. Jesus said, love everyone. Jesus said, give water to the thirsty. Jesus said, listen to the children. Jesus said, take care of the sick. Jesus said, forgive others. And I think it's so important to remember this. So every day, just think, what did Jesus say? How can I serve? How can I show my love? By forgiving others. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves too, right? Because we make mistakes. Feeding the hungry, finding a way to listen to others, listen to children, listen to friends, listen to family, love everyone. And that is hard to do, right? It is hard sometimes to love everyone. Taking care of the sick. If someone in your home is not feeling well, you can help take care of them. You're very capable. And Jesus said to do this. And then there is a prayer wheel and you can make your own. Um, so it says cut out the wheel, glue the spinner, um, use markers, crayons, and you can spin it. And then it has different prayers. You can write down loving God. Thank you that each day we can learn and grow in love. Amen. Loving God, help us to listen with our ears, with our minds, and with our hearts. Amen. Thank you, God, that you care for all your creatures, the biggest, the smallest, and all the ones in between. Help us to care for them, too. Amen. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to share your love with others. Amen. So you can make up your own prayer wheel. That would be kind of nice. And now you're hearing my little creature, Hazel, <laughs> our puppy. <laughs> All right. So thank you for gathering here with us today. Think again about how Jesus cared for others. And please try to find some time for praying. I invite you to spend a few moments in silence right now with your hands folded together and I will say a prayer and a blessing after that. Thank you, God, for Jesus, who showed us how to serve and pray. Thank you for calling us to help share your love, too. Amen. May you all find time this week to serve others and time to pray to God. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week. God bless.